evolution of a natural selection does not tell us the deeper question that we're asking, the answer to the deeper question, which is why. What, what, why, what, what's this deeper reality and what's it up to and why? It, all it tells us is that whatever reality is, it's not what you see. What you see is, is just an adaptive fiction. So just to linger on this fascinating, bold question that shakes you out of your dream state. Does this fiction still help you in building intuitions as literary fiction does about reality? The reason we read literary fiction uh, is it helps us build intuitions and in understanding in indirect ways, sneak up to the difficult questions of human nature. Great fiction. Same with this observed reality. Um, does this interface that we get, this fictional interface, help us build intuition about deeper truths of how this whole mess works? Well, I think that each theory that we propose will give its own answer to that question, right? So when the physicists are proposing um, these structures like the amplitudehedron and cosmological polytope, associohedron and so forth, beyond space-time, we can then ask your question for those specific structures and say, how much information, for example, does evolution by natural selection and the, the kinds of sensory uh, s systems that we have right now give us about this deeper reality? And, and, and why did we evolve this way? We can try to answer the, that question from within the deeper. So there's not going to be a general answer. I think we're going to, what we'll have to do is posit these new deeper theories and then try to answer your question within the framework of those deeper theories, knowing full well there will be an even deeper theory. So is it is this paralyzing though? Because uh, how do we know we're not completely adrift uh, out to sea, lost forever from, so like that our theories are completely lost. So if, if, if it's all, uh, if we can never truly deeply introspect to the bottom, if it's always just turtles on top of turtles infinitely, um, isn't that, paralyzing for the scientific mind. Well, it's interesting that you say introspect to the bottom. <laughs> because there, there is that, there is one, I mean, again, this is in the same spirit of what I said before, which is it depends on what answer you give to what's beyond space time, what answer we would give to your question, right? Mm -hmm. So, but one answer that um, is interesting to explore is something that spiritual traditions have said for thousands of years, but haven't said precisely. So. We can't take it seriously in science until it's made precise, but we might be able to make it precise. In, and that is that um, they've they've also said something like um, space and time aren't fundamental; they're Maya, they're they're illusion. And but but that um, if you look inside, if you introspect, uh, and let go of all of your particular perceptions, uh, you will come to something that's beyond con conceptual thought, and that is they claim, uh, being in contact with the deep ground of being that, that transcends any particular conceptual understanding. If that is correct, now I'm not saying it's correct, uh, but I, and I'm not saying it's not correct. I'm just saying, if that's correct, then it would be the case that as scientists, because we also are in touch with this ground of being, we would then not be able to conceptually understand ourselves all the way, but we could know ourselves just by being ourselves. And so we would, th there would be a sense in which there is a fundamental grounding to the whole enterprise because we're not separate from the enterprise. This is the opposite of third, the, the impersonal third person science. This this would make science go personal, <laughs> personal all the way down, and and but but nevertheless scientific because the scientific method would still be what we would use all the way down for the conceptual understanding. Unfortunately, you still don't know if you went all the way down. It's possible that this kind of whatever consciousness is, and we'll talk about it, is getting um, the, <laughs> the cliche statement of be yourself. Uh, is is it, it is somehow digging at a deeper truth of reality, but you still don't know when you get to the bottom. You know, a lot of people, they'll take psychedelic drugs, and they'll say, well, that takes my mind to certain places where it feels like that is 
revealing some deeper truth of reality, but it's still, it could be interfaces on top of interfaces. That's, that's um, in your view of this, you really don't know. I mean, it's Gato's incompleteness, is that you really don't know. My own view on it, for what it's worth, because I don't know the right answer, but my own view on it right now is that it, um, it's never ending. I think that there will never, that this is great, as I said before, great um, job security for science. And that we, if this is true, and if, if consciousness is somehow important or fundamental in the universe, this may be an important fundamental fact about consciousness itself, that, that it's a never ending exploration that's going on in some sense. Well, well, that's interesting. Let me push back on the job security. Okay. So maybe as we understand this kind of idea deeper and deeper, we understand that the pursuit is not a fruitful one. That maybe we need to, maybe that's why we don't see aliens everywhere, is you get smarter and smarter and smarter. You realize that like exploration is, uh, there's other fun ways to spend your time than exploring. You could be, um, you could be sort of living maximally in some way that's not exploration. Um, you know, I could, there's all kinds of video games you can construct and put yourself inside of them that don't involve you going outside of the game world. It's, uh, you know, feeling, for, for my human perspective, what seems to be fun is challenging yourself and overcoming those challenges. So you can constantly artificially generate challenges for yourself, like Sisyphus and his boulder, <laughs> right. just, and, and that's it. So the scientific method that's always reaching out to the stars, that's always trying to figure out the puzzle upon a puzzle, the, the tr always trying to get to the bottom turtle. Um, maybe if we can build more and more the intuition that that's a infinite pursuit, we get, um, we agree to start deviating from that pursuit and start enjoying the, the here and now versus the hmm. looking out into the unknown always. Maybe that's a looking out into the unknown is a um, early uh, activity for a species <laughs> that's evolved. I'm just sort of saying, uh, pushing back because you probably got a lot of scientists excited in terms of job security. I could, I could envision where it's not job security where scientists become more and more useless. Uh, maybe they're like the holders of the ancient wisdom uh, that's that allows us to study our own history, but not much more than that. Just to get well, that's, that, that's, pushback. That's good pushback. I, I'll, I'll put one in there for the scientists again. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but, but sure, but then I'll take the other side too. So when uh, Faraday did all of his experiments right, with magnets and electricity and so forth. He came up with all this wonderful empirical data and James Clerk Maxwell looked at it and wrote down a few equations, which we can now write down in a single equation, the, the Maxwell equation if we use geometric algebra, just one equation. That opened up unbelievable technologies. Where, you know, People are zooming and talking to each other around the world, um, the whole electronics industry. There was something that transformed our lives in a very positive way. With the theories beyond space-time, here's one potential. Right now, most of the galaxies that we see, um, we can see them, but we know that we could never get to them, no matter how fast we traveled. They're going away from us at the speed of light or beyond, so we can't, we can't ever get to them. So there's all this beautiful real estate that's just smiling and waving at us, and we can never get to it. Yeah, But that's if we go through space-time. But if we recognize that space-time is just a data structure, it's not fundamental. We're not little things inside space-time. Space-time is a little data structure in our perceptions. Mm -hmm. It's just the other way around. Once we understand that, and, and we get equations for the stuff that's beyond space-time, maybe we won't have to go through space-time. Maybe we can go around it. Maybe I can go to Proxima Centauri and not go through space. I can just go right there directly. It's a data structure. We can start to play with it. So, so I think that my, for what it's worth, my take would be that that the endless sequence of theories that we could contemplate building will lead to an endless sequence of new 
remarkable insights into the potentialities, the possibilities mm -hmm. that would that would that would seem miraculous to us, and that we will be motivated to continue the exploration, partly um, just for the technological innovations that that come out. But you're, the other thing that you mentioned, though, what about just being. What if we what if we decide to, instead of all this doing and exploring, what about being? My guess is that the best scientists will do both and that the act of being will be a place where they get many of their ideas and that they then pull into the conceptual realm. And I think many of the best scientists, you think, like Einstein comes to mind, right? Where these guys say, look, I didn't come up with these ideas by a conceptual analysis. I was thinking in vague images and I was it was just something non-conceptual. And then it took me a long, long time to pull it out into concepts and then longer to put it into math. But the real insights didn't come from just slavishly you know, playing with equations. They came from a, a deeper place. And so th there, there may be this going back and forth between the complete non-conceptual where there's essentially no end to the wisdom, and then conceptual systems where there's the girdle limits um, that we have to that. And that may be, if, if consciousness is, is important and fundamental, that may be what consciousness, at least part of what consciousness is about, is this discovering itself, discovering its possibilities, so to speak. We can talk about what that might mean. Um, by going from the non-conceptual to the conceptual and back, back and forth.